morning all and I've been doing a little work on the wearable data display device which you can see here sitting on its uh, wireless inductive charging pad and I've got really used to this wireless charging thing it's really handy um, if I hold the thing like this you can see that the battery voltage is at 3.82 volts if I stick it down on the charger green light comes on here red light comes on on my charging board battery voltage has risen up to 3.86 volts and now the LiPo percentage will climb if I take it off the charger the LiPo percentage will fall now you can see quite clearly that the wireless charger pad is far too large for this thing but uh, I'm planning to get another one of these and cut it down to just the coil bit here and take the uh, regulator circuit and perhaps put it in the middle of the coil just to get the size down to what I need it to be. Now you may have noticed that I've also gone back to an older LiPo. I did have this 600 milliamp hour LiPo in there for a while but unfortunately what happened is that the uh, little tabs here were flexing and the positive one was flexing right up next to the uh, edge of the pack and eventually it broke through so unfortunately I can't use this one anymore but it kind of highlighted a bit of an issue this so-called 240 milliamp hour uh, cell was actually a replacement for this Hubsan one for my quadcopter so with the genuine Hubsan 240 milliamp hour cell in the quadcopter it flies for about five or six minutes now I bought two of these uh, replacement ones or spare ones and uh, charged them fully put them in the quad and it flew for about 20 seconds so I knew I'd been ripped off these are not uh, any good now I'm not sure whether it's just uh, low capacity or maybe high internal resistance probably a combination of both but they're definitely not good quality 240 milliamp power but I thought these ones up here were and this was the first one that was uh, actually used on the wearable and it seemed to give a reasonable run time uh, this thing even with this no good 240 milliamp hour cell runs for about three hours but uh, what I did was um, when I put this cell which had the Hubsan plug in the wearable I put the Hubsan plug onto this cell charged it up put it in the quadcopter flew for about 10 seconds useless so all these four so-called 240 milliamp hour cells are all fakes they're all duds so I've gone back to Banggood which is where I got this 600 milliamp hour cell which appeared very good it seemed to run the wearable for about 24 hours and I've bought some 150 milliamp hour cells so in theory even smaller than these but if it's a genuine cell, and I've every reason to believe that uh, from Banggood it will be, then uh, it'll be interesting to see how long the wearable will run on that cell. Now, what else have I done to this? Well, I've put quite a lot more information on the display. The transmitter now reads all of its analog inputs, A0 to A7. I'm only displaying six of them here, but uh, it's sending all this data out in one packet. A packet can contain up to 32 bytes. So I figure that that's probably 16 integers and I'm only displaying, uh, well, there are 11 being transmit, the eight analogs and these three uh, integers. This one is a simple counter. This one is millis from the transmitter. So it's simply taking the millis value from the transmitter and sending it over um, in the packet. And then my flag, which indicates whether the transmission passed or failed. So all that information is being sent from the transmitter. If I put my finger on the analog pins, you'll see all the analog data changes in response. That's genuine analog input information being sent over. But the main thing I've done, and I felt this was important, and I'll show you what it is. You'll see it when I reset. I'm using the Adafruit OLED display library. And uh, that has the advantage of just making the code in this thing a bit simpler. I'm just using Adafruit uh, library calls to display the data in various positions on the OLED. So what I'll do is in the description, uh, I'll actually it won't be in the description, I'll put a couple of comments in on this video, which will be the receiver code using the new Adafruit OLED display library calls. And I'll also put the transmitter code in as another comment. 
Now, it's starting to become apparent to me that uh, this part of the device really needs to be the front. It was going to be the back. The display was going to fold round to the back and then that would become the front. So it would sit on my wrist this way round. But to be honest, all this stuff here is not going to be very comfortable pressed up against my wrist. So I'm now thinking, let's keep the back of this thing where the LiPo connections are made and where the charger board is. And now where this inductive charging pad is, let's make that the back. That'll sit against my wrist. And then this display, I'm going to now rotate round on the front. But that does make some complication with the layout of these pins. So what it means is that the display is going to be connected like this. Now I'll probably have to put chip select on digital pin 2. Uh, and that means that VCC and ground will end up being probably on digital pins 7 and 8. Now that's not necessarily a problem because if we set the ground one low and the VCC one high, then we can simply power the OLED from two of the digital pins. And uh, I'm going to test that by actually starting to build another one of these wearables. Uh, so I'm probably going to leave this one in its current state, start a new one, and the display will be uh, configured this way around rather than that way around. So to build a new wearable, I'm going to need another 3.3-volt uh, Pro Mini. I'll need another OLED. This is an SPI OLED. I'll, I'll need another NRF 24L01 Plus uh, data transceiver, another LiPo charge board, one of these ones with battery protection, another LiPo fuel gauge for measuring the uh, LiPo battery percentage. That's where this information is coming from and another LiPo, and that will probably be one of these new 150 milliamp hour uh, LiPos from Banggood. So that's the current state of the uh, wearable device. This is the transmitter sending out packets of data, currently just all of its uh, analog pins and a few other integers. Here's the receiver, which you can just pick up off the wireless inductive charging thing. This is the QI standard, or Qi it's called. Um, Put that back on the charger whenever you want to charge the battery back up. Now there is just one issue with the charging on this thing. If you let the battery go so low that the uh, battery protection components cut in, then this won't actually charge when you put it back on the charging pad, or even if you plug in USB for that matter. And it's something to do with the fact that when it's plugged into the uh, Arduino circuitry, the battery protection components won't unlock as it were but it's a fairly easy thing to do you have to just unplug this plug and then uh, the protection components unlock this starts charging and then you can simply plug this plug back in and everything's fine and uh, another related problem is that if the circuitry is powered up then when the device is on the charging pad or again has a USB uh, cable plugged into it it doesn't actually terminate charge the uh, charger board doesn't sense that the current has dropped to a tenth of its nominal and doesn't switch from the red light to the blue light. So again, when you're charging, if you want it to properly terminate, this plug has to be unplugged. So it may be necessary to give the wearable an on-off switch of some sort. And I must admit, I've not had any thoughts on that subject so far, but I'll have a think about what that on-off on switch might be. So there it is, that's the current state of the uh, wearable data display. Now you can connect the transmitter side of this to uh, whatever system you're currently working on, send whatever data you would like through uh, the packet of data that's being transmitted, and then wander about wearing this wearable device, charging it up, uh, obviously it'll discharge itself, and monitoring the data that's being sent from your other project.